Hey, Cameron here with the Seat Butters channel doing a follow up on my new server build. I know it's been several months um, and I probably should have done a video in the middle of doing this, but I'm kind of going back and just showing how the final build turned out. So, one problem I have is in my little utility box here, I do have a small rack, but it's not deep enough to really put any rails on. Um, so I did have a server case in here before and it was just, it, it would mount and it would screw on to the rail, but yeah, I really couldn't get into the box as it was bolted on. This gives me the capability if I need to work on anything to just kind of pull the box out a little bit easier. Um, also, you know, this is actually a pretty tiny rack and this box itself is super tiny. Look, look how big it is compared to my hand. I mean, it's, it's not that big, but yet it holds eight three and a half inch drives which is really what i was looking for now right now i've got uh what 72 terabytes in here so i've got uh, two pairs of 10 terabyte drives and two pairs of six terabyte drives eight total and they are set up mirrored in a zfs configuration the box itself boots um, esxi off a thumb drive and then uses pass through on a on a SATA controller uh, to to work with the drives there. So if I go to the side here, obviously this is pulled open so you can see. Um, I have working in conjunction on two different data stores here are some Intel drives, 100 uh, gigabyte drives. Uh, those are the professional industrial SSDs with capacitors in them, and I'm running a few VMs off of that that I don't want to break. And the second one is just kind of like a uh, backup for those VMs. So I don't, I couldn't actually get it set up in a mirrored configuration like I was originally thinking I might. But, um, you know, I don't have anything super mission critical going on here. And I take backups pretty regularly. So um, there's actually five SSDs total. So I got the two Intel and then there's two 512 MX100s. And those are set up as a mirror in uh, ZFS. Or sorry, they're actually, they're actually a, um, well in ZFS it's not a stripe, but the equivalent of a stripe in uh, ZFS. And those run uh, some of my virtual machines as well. Uh, primarily a media server that does a lot of uh, download upload and I want it to be fast um, but backup isn't super critical on it so if, if those SSDs go bad I just restore my backup I'll be fine but there is an M2 SSD and that is the um, it's actually the Toshiba RD400 back there so it's an NVMe drive and that's running as a zero intent log uh, zeal device to help the ZFS speed up a little bit. Um, whether it's actually doing that in my workload, I'm not entirely certain. I need to do more testing, but just haven't gotten around to it. But uh, it is set up in that configuration. And then I've got my Noctua industrial fans um, and that little mini ITX board back there. Uh, and I might be able to get some better light on that. There we go. And yeah, really a, a tiny build that's doing way more work than my old one did. It also has 64 gigabytes of RAM with the slots available to expand to 128 in the future, should I decide to do that. But let's go take a look on the software side because we might find that a little more interesting in terms of a video than just seeing the hardware kind of in place. So... There we go. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with, with the build. It works really well. No problems at all so far. So I'm happy with every component in this thing. So let's go take a look at the software. All right, so here we are, and I've got the ESXi vSphere client opened up. And this is our box right here. And as you can see, there's lots of processors core, processor cores doing their thing. Um, that's the media server. Here's, here's the normal usage. It's pretty low, 
low server usage. There's just some web servers doing a few things. Um, and then when you see it jump is when the media encoding happens. I have it set to record TV broadcasts, and after it records them, it will re-encode them. So that's where you see a lot of the CPU usage coming into play. But you can see here on the left-hand side all the different uh, boxes that I'm running. I'm running uh, about eight different uh, machines virtualized on that ESXi box. Uh, the first and most important one is the ZFS OmniOS, uh, which is running uh, the several terabytes of all of my data storage uh, put together. It's also running a PFSense router. So the nice thing about this server build is it has two 10 gigabit um, Ethernet ports, which has allowed me to actually connect that box without a 10 gigabit router, because those are kind of expensive, into my office. And that, that setup requires its own video, which I may get into in the future, uh, how, to, how to run 10 gigabit without using a router. Of course, it's just one machine to the server. But since you're virtualized, it's actually my workstation PC in the office to all eight of these machines. So it's it works out. And it allows me to copy uh, really large files over the network super fast, way faster than I could ever get with one gigabit. So anyways, then running several different uh, websites as well, and then the media server itself, which uh, you can see it pulled up here. It's kind of doing its thing, it has Windows Media Center uh, set up to record and a few other little cool things that it does. Um, but if I go to that ZFS, I just wanted to show this, this script that I wrote. Uh, if anyone wants a copy of it, they can ask me and I'll be happy to provide it. But basically it lets me set up a target temperature that I want the hard drives to hit and it will automatically ramp the fan speed up and ramp the fan speed down using uh, IPMI interface, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I guess I better show you uh, the ZFS server as well. Take a look at that. So I've got my pool here. And got about 30 terabytes usable after it's formatted. And as you know, I'm using some mirrors. So I've got two 10 terabyte pairs and two 6 terabyte pairs right there. And then I've got that uh, SSD VM store that I mentioned. And you may say, hey, these aren't 512s like you said. Well, I've kind of, uh, what's the term? Uh, for a hard drive, it's short stroke, but for an SSD, uh, it's, it really helps the performance if you don't partition them to the full size. You kind of hold it back and leave a lot of spare area available, which I've done with these SSDs because they're not running Windows per se. They're in, a, in an array using a kind of a non-standard file system. So in order for it to really work with garbage collection, I've just kind of formatted them a little bit smaller, which really helps the performance. And that, that I have tested, and it really helps to keep those a little bit slimmed down. So I have done that. And so that, that has provided me with a lot of space. So I've got this archive um, network drive uh, that I've used quite a bit of it, but I still have 15 terabytes free, which is a absolute ton of space. But if you're, you know, working on your Blu-ray collection or things like that, archiving your Blu-rays, it's, it's nice to have a whole lot of space. And you can do it, you know, fairly inexpensively at this point. The drives are coming down, um, and you can get a lot of performance. So uh, maybe I'll just, I'll just show you here. Um, this box that I'm running on right now has a Samsung 950 NVMe SSD, so it's it's actually super fast. Okay, so I was uh, moving some files around and realized that I had not enabled jumbo frames yet. I've just recently redone this computer, <laughs> so that was our issue. So you can see here, 
Um, if I go to move this file, boom. Super fast. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up the the Ethernet module so you can see how fast that that runs. Let's pull over. I don't know this one. Oh, that's the one I already did. Let's pull over the 64-bit Windows install, and you can see it's copying pretty fast. And uh, actually, it would actually be much quicker, I'm fairly certain. And the outgoing, it's it's pretty quick, but it's actually running everything on this computer through the PFSense box. That's a way I'm able to <laughs> avoid having to purchase a 10 gigabit router because I'm using basically a software interface. So that's why you're seeing uh, a little discrepancy in the copy versus or the upload versus download. So anyways, but much quicker than one gigabit networking, which is exactly what I wanted with that build. So let's hop back over to uh, the ZFS. And it's really cool. If you haven't checked out ZFS, do some research. It's really great. The Snap-It interface is nice. Um, I know a lot of people have moved virtualization to a lot of different platforms at this point. I'm used to ESXi and I really like it, especially, you know, the free version is good. I know there's uh, several other free options that are available now, but this works for me. Um, and let's take a look at the disks. And the smart info on the disk. I just want to check the temperatures. So what kind of temperatures we're getting. And as you saw in the ESXi platform, it wants these drives to be, uh, I think it was 40, 42 degrees is what I have it set to. So the hottest drive is what I've linked it to. So it will, it will try to keep it below 42 degrees Celsius. And you can see it does a pretty good job there. So these drives are running nice and cool, especially the, I mean, look at these 10 terabyte drives. They run, they run pretty cool. So I think the, I mean, they're really stacked in there pretty tightly and the Noctua fans can ramp up their, their RPM quite a bit, but it hovers, especially in the winter, pretty low in the winter actually. But in general, they're running anywhere from 1400 RPM, which is really not very loud, to 17 or 1800 RPM. So, yeah, that's my server build, and it works pretty well. It's very small, and it does a whole lot of things. So, anyways, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you do, subscribe, like, you know how it goes. And thanks for watching.